Boundless Authenticity Podcast, where we discuss everything related to the evolution of human consciousness. Thanks for tuning in to the Boundless Authenticity Podcast. This episode is in honor of World Dream Day, which is September 25th. Joining me for this is Teresa Chung. Teresa Chung has been researching and writing about spirituality, dreams, and the paranormal for the past 25 years. She has a degree from King's College, Cambridge University in Theology and English, and several international best-selling books, including two Sunday Times top 10 bestsellers to her credit. Her dream dictionary from A to Z, HarperCollins, is regarded as a classic in its field. Her spiritual books have been translated into over 40 languages. She has numerous features published online and in leading newspapers and magazines and is fast becoming known as the Celebrity Dream Decoder. Teresa's media appearances include ITV This Morning, KTLA, Piers Morgan on GMTV, Today Extra, Russell Brand's Under the Skin Episode 71, Buddha at the Gas Pump, Lavender, Listen Honey with Jeannie Mai, Working It with Megan and Ryan Trainer, and Decoding Dreams Live on ITV, Coast to Coast AM, Channel 4, and Capital Radio. Teresa has also given numerous workshops at venues such as Olympia, Alexandra Palace, and the College of Psychic Studies, as well as dream decoding talks for companies such as Anthropology, Beauty Bay, Dynavision, Shisidio, and Hearst Magazine Group. She co-hosted the 2022 DreamWorks Summit for the Shift Network, works closely with scientists studying consciousness, and has her own popular spiritual podcast, White Shores as well as author pages on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can find Teresa at TeresaChung.com. So how's it going, Teresa? It's good. Thank you, Jahan, for inviting me. It's getting better the day because I'm here with you now. It's been a tough day here because we're filming this um, on the day of the Queen's funeral here in the UK. So I'm picking up on all that grief and collective grief. Um, And as I live very close to Windsor Castle, you can imagine what it's like living here right now. The police have shut everything down. It's it's surreal, very dreamlike. I can imagine the energy must be like 10,000 bricks just weighing on you. Thousands and and thousands of people out there. Absolutely. And I wonder how will that affect people's dreams tonight? I think there are going to be a lot of dreams about the Queen or about um, symbols that they associate with the Queen. I predict that very much because that's the dreaming mind helping to process and understand this grief. But if people do dream about the Queen, I want them to know that it's not actually the Queen you're dreaming about. It's what she triggers within you. What does the Queen symbolize to you? So if you do dream about the Queen tonight or in coming nights or whenever, because she's such a global figure, you know, I, I you know she will appear in your dreams probably at some point in your life. Write down your personal associations, not what everybody else says. What does she make you feel? And that's the secret to decoding that dream. That's very interesting. And so let's talk about the subconscious and its role in dreaming. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Well, basically, when you dream, you tap into your subconscious. It is your nocturnal intuition, your creativity and imagination unchained from conscious reason, ego and logic. Because when you're awake, your conscious mind tends to dominate and it pushes the unconscious, the imaginative, the creative, the intuitive, precognitive aspect of you right down. You know, it it doesn't get a look in. It doesn't get a chance. However, when you fall asleep and dream, your conscious mind is fast asleep and your intuition can just get to work and and give you messages, symbols, stories. And um, the reason it chooses these symbols and, and kind of almost bizarre images is because it's the fastest way to get a lot of information to you. Your dreaming mind is always trying to get information to you. So it chooses symbols rather than being literal to do that, because symbols can say so much more than the literal. Right. And so symbols are kind of the language of the subconscious mind. Am I correct? 
Absolutely. In my personal opinion, from all the research I've done, I truly believe that's how the unconscious speaks to you. Why? Because the unconscious comes from a different state of reality. They do things differently there. They speak a different language. If you went to another country to really understand the culture and the people, you should learn their language. And it's exactly the same when you dream. You're going into a different reality, a different country, learn the language, which is the language of your personal symbols. Um, however, I'm going to contradict myself, but, but uh, hey, in dreams love contradiction and paradoxes. There is a very tiny percentage of dreams, and I research those as well, that you can take literally, and that are precognitive and kind of aren't symbolic. So don't discount the literal. Maybe when you have a dream, first of all, think, well, is this relating to anything in my waking life right now? Can I do the literal interpretation? For example, if you have a dream, a classic dream of your teeth falling out, do you perhaps need to go to the dentist? You know, rule out that very quickly. You know, if you dream that you, you go and walk down your drive in the morning and you trip up, you might want to just check your drive that there's no loose stones. Sometimes your dreams, your dreaming mind can do that, but it's very, very, very rare. 99.99% of dreams are symbolic and metaphorical. And it's up to you then to be like a dream detective and go into your dreams and interpret them in the same way as if you were interpreting a work of art or a poem. We've all done that at school where we interpret a poem. The teacher would give us a poem and we have to go through it line by line. Now, what does this mean? What's the hidden meaning? The poet is trying to say something here, but then they're using the metaphor of the sun or the moon to express something deeper. And that's exactly how your dreaming mind speaks to you the great majority of the time, like a poet. Your dreaming mind is a frustrated artist and visionary. It wants to speak to you in that creative language. And if you don't think you're a creative person, because we're all different in waking life, some of us are artistic and creative. If you think of you always thought of yourself as not being a creative person, your dreams completely contradict that. Everybody, when they fall asleep in their dreams, is creative, visionary. They are the director, the produced, producer, the creator of these incredible stories we tell ourselves every night. That's amazing. So I feel like I could take this in any direction at this point, but I have to know. <laughs> what about precognitive dreams? Yeah, I'm going to say something quite radical here, and I'm starting to say it more recently than I have done. I've been writing about dreams forever. If you Google me, you see Teresa Chung, Dream Decoder. I was writing before the year 2000 about this and book after book. And in my research, working with scientists, neuroscientists, sleep and dream researchers, and all the thousands of dream messages I've received over the years, I'm fast coming to the conclusion now, or slowly, if you think it's taken 30 years to get here, that every dream has a precognitive potential or element that every dream is pointing us to a potential future. I mean, this is, you know, if you un try to understand the scientific interpretation of time, it's a series of potential futures. And every dream is shining a nightlight on a potential future, something that might happen, and that could be an actual event or a mindset or a, an emotion or a thought or a perspective that will happen if you don't change your current waking mindset. So if you're listening and you have a dream that's nightmarish or fills you with anxiety or makes you uncomfortable, this is your wonderful opportunity to change whatever is triggering that and create a different future. Because if you don't, that dream will become precognitive. It will play out what it's foreshadowing. I mean, again, in poetry, foreshadowing and literature, you know, there's always a foreshadowing of future events in great novels and in great poems. And this is exactly what happens in your dreamy mind. It does give you warning if you need to course correct. And if you don't listen to those warnings, if you don't heed them, then your dream, you will have that deja vu moment in your dream thinking, I recognize this emotion. I felt this before. And you have, you felt it in the dream state. Or even, I, I, I dreamt this conversation and it's happening. I dreamt this scenario and it's happening. But I don't want everyone to panic. For example, if you dream of having a car crash, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to, because a car crash, let's think symbolically, car crash means you're heading off course. It's the direction in life. It's not the literal. 
But however, if you do have that kind of dream, your dreaming mind saying to you, something in your life is out of control. You've got to now identify what that is. And as I said, that can be a perspective, a mindset that needs some work. And if you don't change it, it's going to manifest. Yeah, that is so interesting that you said that. Because uh, and I want to talk about dreams on behalf of other people as well, because I had a dream that was precognitive that my friend crashed her car and I, I yeah. called her up and, and I said, hey, I had a dream that you crashed your car. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to crash your car, but is everything OK with you? And it turns out that everything in her life was completely upside down and she just wasn't talking to anybody about it. And it kind of gave her the opportunity to speak to somebody about that and, and get some things off her chest. And she realized that she had to make some very big decisions and with the way things were going because she was totally off course. So it's very interesting that you said that. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you are a dream worker. Wow. What an ability. And I'm going to encourage people who do have dreams about other people because other people do figure in our dreams and we often discount that, but I I'm going to ask people now, if you do dream of someone, and particularly if they're in distress in that dream, there's no harm in sending a message and saying hi, right? And there's no harm in saying, look, I, you know, they won't think you're weird. Actually, most people really feel quite special when you say you're in my dreams. It's actually quite a nice thing to say. But just say, I had a dream. And if it opens up discussion and they're open and willing to discuss, fine. If they're not, don't pester them. But have the courage to reach out to people you dream about because they are appearing in your unconscious for a reason. Right, either because something's going on with them that you have picked up on energetically, or they are representing something within you that you need to learn or understand better. And either way, having a dialogue with them, if you can, obviously, if you dream about celebrity, that's not possible. But if it's someone you know who's within your orbit, um, it's no harm saying, Hi, how are you? As I say, if they don't want to speak to you, you have no control over other people. You saying something is not going to influence them. Let it go. Do not go beyond that initial reaching out. But also, the more you do that, actually, again, I'm glad you said that, the more you act out your dreams or something happens in your dream and then the next day you pay homage to that, i.e., if you dreamt of your friend, you reached out to her, your dreaming mind loves it because it shows you're taking your dreaming mind seriously. And the more seriously you take your dreaming mind, the more it will reward you. Similarly, if you dream that you're riding a bicycle in your dream or, you know, maybe go for a bike ride if you've got one the next day. And as you're doing it, remember your dream. Connect your waking and your dreaming life together. And increasingly, you will see that the two are interconnected. They are one. It's, you know, it's just you in a different state of a reality at night when you sleep. You don't stop being you when you fall asleep. You continue. And to, to cut a long story short, please act out your dreams safely. Please, people, safely. <laughs> don't do crazy things. Like if you dream of having an affair, I'm not recommending that. Or if you dream of cheating or lying or killing people. No, no, no. Do not act that out. However, if there's something that isn't going to harm anyone, including yourself, just the next day, act it out because your dreaming mind will thank you for it. Your dream, you will strengthen your dreaming muscle that way. You're sending it such a powerful affirmation during the day that you trust it, you believe in it, and you want to hear more. And then the following night, you're going to get more rewarding dreams. But again, to go to these violent, disturbing dreams, do not act them out. However, see them for what they are, symbolic representations of either in a turmoil within you or something you're picking up around you. Awesome. So tell us about what happens in the brain when we're dreaming. Oh, goodness, no. Scientists don't really even know that at all. <laughs> you know, for my t- work with scientists, they don't actually know what happens when we dream. They know that there's a part of our brain and it's a part of our brain that is associated with creativity, with imagination, with brainstorming, with communication that does remain awake and is firing in our sleep. And if you're listening and you think, I never recall my dreams, I don't dream, you do, you're just not recalling them. Because brain scans show that we dream every single night at least five or six times. I don't know what happens in the brain and neither do the great majority, in fact, all scientists don't know for sure why we dream. 
what happens when we dream. And I tell you what, what's also fascinating, they don't even know why we sleep. Science isn't really even sure about that. There's so much that's mysterious about us. But what they do know is that if you are deprived of REM stage of sleep, that's the stage of sleep where most but not all your dreaming happens, there is increased risk of anxiety and depression and more, an increased risk of earlier swifter death, suggesting that perhaps the reason we sleep is because we need to dream. That's so you don't you know, that makes sleep, a lot of sense. You need to dream. You need to work that part of you because mm -hmm. you, you know you're both rational and intuitive. You're not one or the other. Even though you may feel some people in waking life may choose one camp or the other, it all course it all corrects and balances out when you fall asleep. That makes so a lot of sense. So if you are sense. a wildly intuitive person, you may find that in your dreams you have a more sort of a practical, slower kind of dreaming life you know it can it balances it out for you so that you have you are whole and all aspects of yourself are working together nicely that makes sense it really does make sense i mean i've met a lot of people that say um oh i never dream and it's like really they do never <laughs> they do, they do. they're just not recalling it they're just not recalling their dreams because they've probably been told at some point in their life that dreams are trivial typically at school that dreams are random firings of the brain that dreams don't matter they're nonsense you know that awful phrase it was just a dream no it was not it was so much more it was your inner therapist your nocturnal intuition you could call that the voice of your heart talking to you and trying to give you some precious wisdom. And it's such a shame people wake up in the morning and they don't tap into that precious wisdom. Because I found that the more people do dream work, start thinking about their dreams, start acting on the messages of their dreams, start understanding their dreams, the more content they feel. And also the more they understand themselves and from self-understanding comes self-love. And that really is the key. To a fulfilling life when you've got self-understanding self-belief and self-love really that's when the magic of life begins if you haven't got those three in place whatever you do externally or you try to input nothing's going to work you could be really fabulously popular fabulously wealthy um you know have an amazing career but if you haven't got those three things the inner work hasn't been done it's a disaster. And we see that playing out all the time on the world stage. People who seem to have it all, but they're dreadfully unhappy, resorting to addictive substances or abusive relationships or risk, risky, risky behavior. Um, and it's actually just showing us now, we, you know, with social media, we can get access to the lives of people who allegedly have it all, all the things that we chase which is massive popularity, money, good looks, et cetera, et cetera. And often, if that was the secret to happiness, why doesn't it make these people, most of these people happy? And the reason is they haven't got the inner work. And your dream, dream work is all about that inner work, inner wealth, inner belief, inner understanding. It's the best starting point. Because it also shows you that there's a part of you that is unseen and mysterious. And, and sort of exists outside of your body. We don't know where we go when we dream. It's kind of a surreal state. And it feels so real when you have a dream, doesn't it? It feels like, where am I? You know, you're having a dream and it's like, this is happening. And then you wake up and you think, well, it didn't because I'm here. What's going on? And it makes you think that you're so interesting and mysterious. But there's a part of you that nobody can touch that is just yours. And it's a part of you that is the magic. You know, Theresa, very often I wake up from my sleep and I'm like, man, I need a nap to get over that <laughs> dream I just had. I'm so tired. <laughs> but let's talk about, um, you know, besides some of the things that you've said before, how specifically can someone use their dreams to bridge the gap between dream life and cultivating deeper spirituality? Well, first of all, write down your dreams every morning. Um, but And I would suggest that you have at least 20 dreams to work with. People do get hung up on interpreting one dream. 
I want you to have a series of dreams so that you see how your dreaming mind is commenting night after night on your waking life. Your dreaming mind is very current. It is going to be commenting on what's happening right now in your life. People think sometimes it's about the distant past. It isn't. It's about your current state of mind. But you need to gather at least 20 dreams over a period of several weeks to actually see that process. So that's a big dream decoding tip. Don't just go to sleep tonight, have one dream where you're a squirrel and you fly to the moon or whatever, and then just try and spend all your time understanding that. Write it down, leave it. And then the next night, write down the next, the next, 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 until you've got about 20. I would say 20 is the minimum. Then go back and you will see themes and you will see symbols reoccurring. And you will see like a TV series, a storyline, and you will see how your dreaming mind is like a voiceover to your waking life trying to offer you in a symbolic language advice, brainstorming, insights to help you evolve. That's how dream work helps you. It Every single night, it is trying to point you in the direction of your higher self. Sometimes it will resort to tough love by using nightmares and anxiety symbols. And the reason it does that is because you've been ignoring the gentler symbols. It usually starts in a gentle way, trying to help you course correct. But if you don't pay enough attention to it, it will escalate into something more scary. Nightmares are the ultimate transformative gift because your dreaming mind has reached a point when it thinks, I love you, but you need some tough love now. And I'm going to shock you into remembering this and getting the message. And once you do get the message of your dream, you, f- you will find that it doesn't recur. And then you, you will have this moment in waking life when you say, I understand. That moment of illumination, when life just, you know, you have this sort of leap forward in understanding about who you are. You, you get to know yourself better. You get to make better decisions. And every single night, your dreaming mind is helping you do that. I have found that to be true. I, I, I mean, I don't write my dreams down every morning, but I usually uh, meditate and stuff immediately as soon as I wake up and I go back through things while it's still fresh to kind of look at uh, stuff that has happened. And there's so much stuff that has happened that I've, I've been able to resolve. For example, a dog that I now have, and he's an Akita and um, I kept having a recurring dream where it would just very quickly switch sequences to being attacked by this black wolf. And what would happen is I would have to wrestle this thing to the ground. So the first few dreams I ran from it, I was like, Oh shit, you got to get away. And then <laughs> I eventually leaned into that and I realized that I could grab the wolf and wrestle it to the ground. And then when I finally did that, um, several nights in, in a row, it disappeared. And then what actually happened was my aunt had a litter of puppies <laughs> and all of them were given away except for one. And she was like, I got to get rid of this one puppy. Do you want him? And when I looked at it, it was the exact same dog from my dream. That's your soul yeah. dog. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, visiting oh, I've, oh, I've had people message me that they've dreamt about their pet before they got them. Uh, this is well. This is beautiful, and I'm glad you you did you do that in your meditative state, turn around and face it, or actually in the dream state where you lucid in the dream. actual dream of itself. I, I dream, realized, so were, yeah, yeah, you were going becoming lucid. You knew it was a dream, and you kind of turned around, and 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 that that's that's a really powerful thing to do because what you're doing then you are kind of influencing your unconscious, and when you can do that. When your unconscious believes something and when your unconscious is something that you can influence, the rewards in waking life are incredible because if you're often things don't work out in our waking life because our unconscious doesn't believe in us, our unconscious doubts us, our unconscious is confused. And what you're doing is you're giving certainty to your unconscious there that you want to face your fear, whatever that wolf represented, it was a fear or something you were repressing or denying and did not want to integrate into your personality. But the dream was saying, look, this is part of your personality. There's day and night in our waking world and there's day and night within you as well. And sometimes there are uncomfortable aspects of ourselves, which we need to acknowledge 
And in the dream state, we can do it safely so that when you wake up the next day, you don't have to act out the negative aspects of you because in your dream, you've understood it and you've hugged it and said, I understand why you're here. And that's why, again, you know, nightmare work is so therapeutic because we all have a shadow within us. You know, you know, Jungian psychology there, we all have a shadow side. And the mark of a, a really strong person is not repressing or denying that side. It is acknowledging, yes, that's a part of me, but I'm not going to act on it. And dream work can help you do that. It can help you turn around and say, Wolf, talk to me. Why are you chasing me? What do you want? And most of the time, they just want a dialogue. They just want you to acknowledge their existence, and then they will leave you alone. It's when you deny, say, whether that wolf represented jealousy, hatred, anger, regret, shame, whatever it was, that's for you personally to know. It just wants understanding and an acknowledgement. It doesn't want being, being buried. And you, in your dream, you, you gave it that. You just gave it that recognition. Yeah, it took me quite a while to become like that. And let me just say many years ago, I was the kind of person that I was afraid of looking at the places where there was a void in my life. And yeah, instead, and I would try to suppress and do things that caused more pain. Yeah. And I that made me learn to take a, a complete 360 and become the kind of person that goes directly at everything. Yes. So I think somehow that has transferred across to my dream life because... Many years ago, I started having extremely vivid dreams and um, I didn't really know how to take that. And in a lot of those dreams, people or creatures, strange things were chasing me. And I realized that if I turned around and I, I said, stop, and I chased them back, they'd be like, oh shit, and start running. And so <laughs> I, uh, I thought that was hilarious to say the least. But I think that a lot of people get afraid when those things happen and they completely miss a lifetime of learning. Like there's could be things that they could get rid of in their lives completely. And they just, they're too afraid and they don't know how to even begin to get a grip on the dream. So what are some tips for bringing yourself into lucidity, if you will? Bringing yourself into lucidity is that the, the uh, one of the most classic tried and tested techniques is during the day to do reality checks. Maybe every time you check the time to say, am I asleep or am I dreaming? Because remember what I said about dreams um, reflecting your waking life, what you do repeatedly in your waking life will often show up symbolically in your dreams. So the idea is that when you are in your dream and you notice a clock or anything to do with time, you automatically do a reality check and say, am I awake or am I dreaming in the dream? And if you're dreaming, something strange will happen, like the clock will become a bird or you'll fly or something. But if you're awake, you know, reality persists. So doing reality checks is very important. I would suggest doing a lot of fiction reading as well, maybe even a little bit of video gaming, fantasy games in moderation, watching fantasy movies. And I'll tell you why, because all these things, they use the language of symbols and metaphors, which your dreams love. You need to feed your dreaming mind with creative food and symbolic food. Your dreaming mind is craving for material. Um, and so what it will do, it will pick on something in a book or a novel or a game that really feels it has a powerful message for you and then serve it up to you again at night. And you've got to think, well, why that symbol? You know, this whole novel I was reading has, has so much going on, or this game has so many characters, so many colors, so many scenes. Why this specific character? And that's where the, the magic and the gold is in, you know, with your dream interpretation, because then you can take that symbol and you can work away at it. And also the more you practice alternate realities during the day, because when you read a book, a really good novel, you lose yourself, don't you, a bit? You go into an alternative reality and that's exactly what happens in the dream. You're in another state. So if you want to practice that during the day by suspending disbelief, that really does encourage more lucid dreaming. There is a proven link between people who are video gamers and lucid dreaming, for example. People who are avid readers, particularly fiction, and lucid dreaming. So heed that link. Um, what are our other, other tips? Before you go, go to bed at night, setting the attention and saying, I'm going to have a dream, and I'm going to know I'm dreaming when I'm dreaming. 
all these things. But my biggest advice for lucid dreaming, and I, I can really vouch for this, is don't force it. It's a gift. It'll just happen if you're open to it. There are lots of techniques like the wake back to sleep technique and everything. I don't recommend that because it messes with your sleep schedule and sleep is important for your holistic well-being. The best thing for lucid dreaming is to keep a dream journal, to love your dreams, get a good night's sleep and to be open to the possibility and relax and think, okay, my dream works so magical. I don't really need a lucid dream. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, doesn't. So just love your dream decoding first and get get into the habit of writing your dreams every morning and thinking about them every evening um, and, and drawing out their wisdom. The more you do that, the more likely you are to have a lucid dream naturally rather than forced. Because, uh, you know, the wake back to sleep technique is, for example, you go to sleep, you set the alarm for like four, four o'clock in the morning and then you you sit up and meditate a bit and then you go back to sleep And the reason is that because when you go back to sleep in the morning, you're more likely to have REM stage sleep, rapid eye movement sleep and lighter sleep, which is more likely for lucid dreams to occur. That's why if you have a nap during the day, you're more likely to become lucid as well because your sleep's lighter and you're in REM. So you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it um, because sleep is important. Sleep is sacred. I call they it's doctor sleep. Dr. Sleep and Professor Dream. That's how I'm going to say it is. You get every night you get a, a chance to meet Dr. Sleep, who's working on your body and your mind, and Professor Dream, who consults your heart and soul. You get to meet both these experts in your holistic well being. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, I think that there's a bit of an elephant in the room where it comes to the pandemic and, and the lockdowns and stuff like that, oh, where yeah. people had to meet themselves at a different level of spiritual awareness. And a lot of people probably did that through dreams. Am I correct? Absolutely. And probably the reason I'm here talking to you, having the privilege of doing that is the lockdown dream phenomenon. As I said, I've been writing since I think my first book was published in 1997. I've written book after book in this area. Um, I'm most well known for dream work. My dream dictionary A to Z is, is, has gone all over the world and my dream decoder is in the Freud Museum. So I've been writing all these books, but it wasn't until the lockdown that suddenly the media wanted to talk to me. Because before that, I was very much a spiritual, mystical author. You know, I didn't do much media. I didn't do podcasts. I didn't really talk to people. I just put my books out. And I had an audience, and I was blessed that I got book after book published in this area. But it was the lockdown that suddenly I was being called up by BBC or ITV over here in the UK or podcasts, and everybody was dreaming. And there was a reason they were dreaming. It's quite simple. Biologically, they were getting more REM. And also, if they were on furlough, they were lying in in the morning. And that's one of the great ways to have dream recall as well, is that not to immediately get out of bed in the morning, just stay still for a few moments and let those dreams come. Because if you leap out of bed, particularly with an alarm clock, your chances of dream recall are next to none because you're going too much into waking reality. But during furlough, a lot of people had more relaxed mornings, so there was more chance for the soul, our nocturnal soul, to speak to us. So, yeah, as I said, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your question. I was so talking about what happened to me. Sorry about that. That was very ego-driven. But it was. It was like suddenly the media remembered who I was, and they, oh, I've got Teresa Chung's dream dictionary. Let's, let's, let's bring her on to talk about what is going on, what do dreams mean? And it hasn't stopped since. And I'm so pleased in a way, one positive that came out of the lockdown is that people have become more aware of the unseen inner world than ever before. And it's beautiful. And I hope that continues, that they continue to pay attention to their dreams. You know, I, I've really gone on a mission to talk about dream power as never before. I've really done as much as I can, not just here in the UK, but in the US. I've been talking to celebrities, for example, about it. I've had a lot of celebrity dream decoding. And I'm not into celebrity culture, but the reason I do it is that these people have big platforms. And if they're into their dreams, they're, you know, their followers are more likely to think, well, what do my dreams mean? So I've been doing that, you know, for the last two to three years now. It literally was when the lockdown started that I was ready actually to hang up my hang up my keyboard. And think, well, I'll do other things. 
but the universe had other plans. <laughs> you know, and it's wonderful. I, I'm in this position now. I feel very, very blessed to talk to people about dream power and hopefully to not present it in a woo-woo eccentric way you know i mean my background is i've been to king's college cambridge i work with neuroscientists you know because a lot of people are kind of seeing you know with dream decoding oh it's psychic or it's woo woo or it's witchcraft or whatever to try and eliminate all that it's not at all it's not it's just your inner world what's unseen about you and to return to how we started with the queen's funeral i'm seeing that right now people are you know, grieving for the queen. They have memories of her. They will dream of her. At the end of the day, that's what truly matters in life. You know, our inner feelings, our memories, our dreams, our hopes. That's what keeps us going. It's not all this external stuff. You know, career and all that material stuff. These are all, you know, life's a school, I think. They're good for us. They help us evolve. But at the end of the day, when people are on their deathbed, there's a reason for that cliche. Nobody speaks about the time at the office. It's love. It's memories. It's dreams. That's what people connect to. That's what gives them hope and a sense that their life has meaning and purpose. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, one could say that the pandemic caused people oh there go my chickens they want to oh, talk about it. dreams I too chickens. How wonderful. <laughs> i think they keep me lucid in a lot of ways because they, they'll crow like three in the morning and i'll i'll yeah, stir and then go, and go back to sleep the chicken, <laughs> there goes the, chicken, again. Um, the chicken study for lucid dreaming i'll i'll, I'll suggest that next time <laughs> Chicken, yeah. Chicken, dreaming. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I, I actually wanted to say that, yes. Yeah, one could say that. I love this. I love this. Like people waking up. So they're waking up and, and they must record their dreams when they hear a chicken. It's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, you could say that people did uh, wake up through their dreams, you know? They did wake up through their dreams during the pandemic. And a lot of people yes. have really learned they woke a up lot. To the fact that they are dreaming beings. Because that's again what's so beautiful about dreams. Whatever your age, whatever your culture, whatever your religion, whatever your age or stage in life, you still dream. Dreams are part of what unites us. You know, we all dream whoever we are, whatever our rank, whatever our position, whatever our social media following, whatever. Whatever, we all are united by our ability to fall asleep and enter this alternate world that's entirely of our own creation. Well, I'm sure that people would love for us to talk about the different types of dreams and get into all the juicy stuff, but you see the chicken says... Another thing with, with dreams, it's, it's an opportunity, that famous quote, for us all to go quietly and safely insane every night and I, I think the, the chicken in the background is adding to that it is it, it's also an opportunity when we fall asleep to not take ourselves so seriously because dreams are nuts they're bizarre they're inherently funny a lot of them there's a lot of punning in dreams you know the dreaming mind's actually quite funny it will it will stop you taking yourself so seriously you know i think a lot of us do we take ourselves way too seriously and you know dreams correct that they bring humor and the bizarre, which is much needed. Yeah. Having said that, I think my chicken wants everybody to know to go read your books. <laughs> if they want to decode <laughs> oh, their dreams you. and find out about things like, what does it thank mean you. when when I dream about this the ocean and things like that? <laughs> I love this. I couldn't have asked for a better backdrop. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him, I'll tell him you're a fan. It reminds me at least for seeing Thor, Love and Thunder talking about fantasy. The latest Marvel superhero. Oh, no, I have not seen it. I don't watch Well, there's movies. two goats in there that, that have the most incredible cry. It's very funny. The goats in Thor, Love and Thunder. So anyone listening who enjoys fantasy movies, <laughs> they, will, they will be rolling about laughing now because the goats are very funny. And they make this, they have this scream that's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound funny. So, Teresa, tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, 
I'm quite prolific. So if you just Google Teresa Chung, um, but my website is www.teresachung.com. I'm on Instagram at the tree, the Teresa Chung. Um, I'm also on Facebook. My Facebook author page is my most popular page, but I'm also on Twitter. Fantastic. Teresa, thanks for being on the Boundless Authenticity podcast. Well, thank you for having me. It's been infinitely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. One could say this has been a dream come true. <laughs> you stole my line there. <laughs>